Okay, so let's start and get to building some bodies. We'll start with our basic shape skeleton, as we normally would. Make sure to keep the arms and legs kind of wide apart here. We will want that space. I'm going to break this down. Now, two key sections here. The upper body. And the lower body. And these are just pieces of me and see exactly where I'm doing. Now, when I first started with drawing people, I was actually in college. No high school, junior high course ever actually went to the drawing people properly. college, they don't teach you how to use the basic shape skeleton and say, okay, now this is how you lay your muscles on. I had two methods I'd go through. One was having to take a skeleton model about this tall, and then I was supposed to mold all the muscles out of clay and fit it onto this model. Interesting. Not something that we can do, because unfortunately those skeleton models are kind of expensive and I had to rent mine. And the other one was watching my teeth and my professor do it, and then apply what I saw by drawing a natural person. Now, obviously, you cannot look at someone and immediately tell all of their muscles. We all wear too many layers, and especially during this time of year, some of us are wearing two, three layers. Not really easy to see how someone's muscular works. So I had to do it the old academic way. What do you think the old acad academic way was? I'll give you a hint. The old academics didn't have a lot of clothes back then. I had to draw actual new people, yes. Now, the media will let you think that, well, it's kind of like the Titanic, drawing me like one of your French girls. The girls are always pretty and really nicely performed. The guys are always muscular, looking like Greek gods. That is not true. I've seen some nightmares things in trying to draw people, but it did help me in the long run. I will not expose you to those horrors in sight because I don't want to get fired, or in story because I don't want y'all to not be able to eat today. I will tell you this though, I met a lot of people that were as about as flexible as Spider-Man. Pick up what you will. So we're going to start up here at the neck. Now your neck curves down, like so, and ties into your sternum. Don't draw too hard because just like with drawing faces, you'll want to erase your guidelines after the fact. Then coming from about the midpoint, we're going to connect to our shoulders. Let me zoom in so I can see better. There we go. Now 
we're not going to get to the arms just yet. We are going to go into the pectorals, your chest muscles. Look at the board. Uh-huh. So you want to get straight through that. Now, your pectorals don't just sit on your chest like Windows and Optimus Prime. They actually come from under your arms. They're also not rectangular. They are curved. Like anything else about it. Student, if you are in Mr. Clock or Mr. Lewis's first period class, please come up to the best room. Students that have Mr. Clock or Coach Lewis for first period, please come up to the best room at this time. Thank you. Now, right here is where the muscles will tie around your sternum, basically the middle portion of your ribs. And from there, we create our abdomen. Now, your abdomen kind of fits you like a one-piece swimsuit. It ties into the middle, going around your pelvis. On the sides of your body, wrap around the space of air. So that little bit of flesh you see sit atop someone's belt, kind of like a muffin top. That really exists just about everywhere unless you have 0% body fat. And we're going to give a body type so we'll see how that works. And that little bit there is caused by this sheet of muscle that sits right inside the pelvis. So now that we've gotten that far, let's move back up to our arms. Now, like anything else, your arms are going to tie themselves up around the bones of your arm. Everything is rounded, but everything has to taper. What does taper mean? Close. If someone gets a taper fade, what does that mean? There you go. Around the point where your muscles are actually coming around the joints, it's going to be thicker. As it reaches down towards another joint, it's going to taper or thin as you get further down. No muscle starts like that. Rather, nothing, no muscle ends like that. It always, like so, and then tapers down as it ties into another muscle. And especially when you get to joints like the elbow or wrist, it thins out again. Now, your arms are also held by something else. Raise your arm like so. Now, feel to be close. You can feel like this flap of flesh here. That kind of connects to your chest and your underarm. This actually comes from your back. It kind of, kind of has an almost wing-like projection. But these muscles help keep your arms in place. So it's not just bone. You have muscles here on the back and here that keep your arm tied in place. Without it, your arm would just pop out of its sockets and pretty much everything it did. Now, we've tapered as we've got to our elbow, and once again, we are going to expand outward and taper again And once we get to what joints down here? The wrist. Now for the hand, the good shape I always use is a trapezoid. Now 
Watch how big you make your hands, because your hands should not be bigger than your head, or it should be wide enough to cover your face. So what are we missing here? The abs. The abs have to just make a line right down the center. And here's the thing. Everyone has abs. No matter how, okay, how thin you are, how fat you are, how muscular you are, everyone has abs. The only difference between one person and the next is how defined they are. Now, everyone wants to talk about, so oh, I got a six-pack. Like, you can actually have like an eight-pack, 12-pack even. But it's not that you're growing more muscles, it's that you have put so much muscular weight on your body that the abs you do have are starting to fold. It's also why your abs will always be in an even number. So the abs, sort of a curved line, and make sure it ends right at this middle line here. They're always going to kind of curve diagonally down towards your navel. And the important part, once you have these down, go ahead and erase the parts of your bishop shaped skeleton that you can see. It's most important you do that because you don't want these lines to start confusing you. Let's speak in the first place. So once we have that, let's go into our lower body. Up. Now, starting from a little curve here, we're going to curve right down to about midway on the thighs. We're going to connect that back up to just under our abdominal muscles. These make up the sides of your leg, your thighs. And just like with the arm muscles, they will taper towards your joints. Now, you're going to notice this space between the legs. You're going to have this little curve like so. That curve is the inner part of your buttocks, your gluteus. And once you reach this point, curve out from your knee and taper to your ankle. Now this part I have kind of bulging out a little further than the other one. What's this? A calf. And once again, once you are done, erase your guidelines. Remember, Always taper. You do not want to be that person that makes their muscles look like bubbles. Oh, 
I want you to come to this point, look at your feet. Now, we've been using triangles up to this point, but don't think it odd to add a little bit of a curve and arch to your foot. Besides the fact that, you know, the human body is nothing but curves, the same applies to your foot, to your shoes, so as well. The part right here should be curving upwards. That forms the ball of your feet. So nose the arch, point to do the ball, and then everything in the front of my foot. What is the importance of having this curve? Pardon? Also, look at the stick, but think this one. Pardon? Not that we're aware. It's more of a balance issue. See, as you walk, you are wearing down your skin. Your skin regrows every day, of course. But you want it to grow back in even like, Otherwise, you start getting calluses. That little urge is what prevents your feet from being completely flat. Because if your feet were completely flat, well, think of a car tire. Eventually, what happens to tires as you drive them a lot? They wear down. The rubber the treading, they wear down until a point that is completely smooth. And once that happens, what is your tire? Like you get hot, a flat. It'll get popped. Either the heat will get to it, or there'll be something in the road, and it won't have to be a nail. It won't have to be some sort of glass. It can be as simple as a pebble. The things that the treads catch. If your feet were completely flat, you would be actively running down your own flesh and then muscle with every move you did. It's like how when I say when you throw a punch, you got to make sure that you have something anchoring you to the ground, otherwise you're going to go flying in the direction of wherever you're trying to hit. So why just make sure your feet have those arches? I want you to embrace the guidelines. And give our head here. More accurate shape. Got to get the chin in. Congratulations. You're drawing a body with muscles. Now keep in mind, this is a very basic model. I'm not going to have you do anything more advanced than this, because that's not my station. However, it's important to know what the standard it looks like before we get into other body types. Because keep in mind, this takes into account muscle, fat, and flesh. These aren't just the muscles, but this is everything that is essentially a hard to I'm not going to go over the actual muscles, because that's a lot more lines, a lot more labeling, and that's not very easy, especially when we are weak away from grip. But with this, now you have a better understanding on how your body looks when it's moving. Now, I get this question over here. Oh, famous Mr. Scott, but what did you want to draw a girl? Same thing. We are not really any different from females in terms of build, but it's just enough that they have wider hips. None of the differences, the physical differences between male and female, besides the you know, obvious psychological, are really apparent if you look at someone's muscles. Or whether the hinges only come from the bones. Slightly different sides of the rib cage, part of the pelvis, so on and so forth. Unfortunately, then I was that student that goes, Well, Mrs. Scott, when are you going to teach us how to draw the, you know, the other thing? Here, you are going to do that. No, this is God. And? We'll go over that too, but let's get the body first. No, Mrs. God. These. 
And yeah, I actually had a student do this. Here's the thing. Most of this is muscle. I've not really included that as a fact yet. Rather, I have not included it enough. Because these are in this fact. Generally speaking, when fat sits on women faster than men, they're because they need more energy. When you are an effort, fat is really just for the penalty. And since we're not responsible for, you know, getting things alive, we don't need as much. Since I can tell this right now, no man would be able to survive talking. Whatever my question is, let it die. Whatever my question was, let it die, friend. But no, but let it die. I'm not even going to ask for, for details because when I try to apply science, you're going to start screaming, and I'm not used to that headache. So, we actually finished up the body right quick. Now, I will post this here for today. And then the other part, you know, is I will post in a separate video that you will find tomorrow because there's no way on God's green earth I'm going to discuss that and tell all you amateur boards. Do not have any tension because we didn't draw them. No, I can't go for it. Alright, y'all have a good day? See you tomorrow. Well, online anyway. <laughs>